Few can be called living legends. Now NFL Network has six of them. We're celebrating LaDainian Tomlinson, Kurt Warner, and Terrell Davis, and also the entire 2017 Hall of Fame class. The Hall of Fame gold jacket ceremony is Friday at 9 o'clock Eastern, and then the enshrinement ceremony Saturday at 7 o'clock Eastern. Check out what the Broncos posted today on their Twitter account. Hall of Famers and best buds, it is hard to believe that it's been 20 years since they won their first ring together. And earlier today, John Elway and TD caught up at Broncos camp. How can this team get better? Like, what are you guys looking at offensively? Let's talk to the start there. How can you guys get better? Well, I mean, I think we just have to be more consistent offensively and do some better things, stay on the football field. I think we had more than three and outs than anybody in the league last year, and, and or we're second. And then, uh, you know, we need to score some points. And so, and try to get some balance on the offensive side. And also with the young quarterbacks we have, try to help them a little bit. You know, I think we'll be much better in the offensive line and be able to run the ball better. And with the experience that uh, Trevor has, and even with Pax, and even only played only two games last Last year, whoever, whichever one rises to the top, will be better around them. So I think we're going to be much better on the, on the offensive side. Defensively, you know, we didn't have the year we had the year before because of the fact that that year, you know, in 2015, it was good as defense as there's been in a long, long time. Uh, so we got to do a better job against the run. And uh, but I think we can do that. And our and the mindset's really good on both sides of the ball. And I think in camp, the offense has done a better job. And plus, we're getting some of that confidence. So I mean, tell us inside quarterback right now Trevor Paxton you know what Trevor, we're gonna wait until see what happens I mean you know we're gonna throw the ball out let them both compete you know they're both young and they're both very good quarterbacks we feel good about the situation that uh, that we are there and and uh, you know obviously uh, Trevor's got more experience having started 14 games last year and uh, but they're both t talented guys so we're gonna see you know how it, uh, well, the preseason goes and uh, you know pick the guy from there so if you're if you're Trevor is this is this a situation where <laughs> Paxton has to clearly beat him out. Because, you know, yeah. you know he's the incumbent. He, he's got the experience that you talked about. He's the quarterback that seems to have a little bit of the upper edge at, the, at this at this point. You know, and I think I think it's gonna I think it'll read out itself. Actually, you know, I think we'll see in preseason see how things go. You know, the bottom line is where I feel pretty good about it is either one of them that goes, I think we're gonna be okay. You know, and be in pretty good shape even though they're young, but they'll they'll continue to get better with the more experience experience more snaps they get. So, and like I said, you know, we got good people. We're better in the offensive line. We got good people for them to throw to, and we can you know hopefully run the ball better. So, you know, we've got we've got a chance. Like I said, to be a lot better offense. Okay, talk about the offensive line. Ron Leary comes over. Man Lake Watson, you guys bring over here. How different is this unit from last year's unit, and, and where are they in, in terms of Jeff Davison finalizing an offensive line? Well, I mean, they're still – we're trying to figure out what the best five is. But, uh, you know, and then Bowles has come in on the left side and done a good job. He continues to get better with more experience. And, and like you said, with Watson and Leary on the right side now and Paris at center and in a battle with at left guard with uh, Barbary as well as, you know, Max. And so, you know, we got competition in there. We'll try to find the best five. But, you know, we're much more powerful, much bigger, and much more physical. Okay. So in, in a week or so, um, actually less than a week, Hall of Fame is coming up. I need some advice from you, man. Like, you know, wow. I need some advice. So <laughs> what should I expect when I get there? Man? You know what? It's, Tell me it's, something a, about it's a that. tremendous three or four days that you're there. And you know what I will say is enjoy every minute of it because uh, it's something that you worked hard for. It's very much deserved. I'm very happy for you as, as in all the Bronco fans out there. And so, you know what I mean? Take it all in. Take it you all deserved in. it and you worked hard to get there. Yeah, I appreciate it, man, because I'm, I'm a little nervous, to be honest with oh, you, man. Was, yeah, was, is, yeah. that, is that a natural you'll feel, reaction? You'll feel much better once you get your speech over. That's always the thing. That's the one thing. <laughs> How many times did you change yours, by the way? A bunch. A bunch. <laughs> and I probably changed it when I was up there talking about it, too. So <laughs> did you, did you add more or did you take, you take stuff off? I didn't want to stay up there too long, but, uh, you know, I added a little bit as time went on. Absolutely. Speaking of Hall of Fame, Pat Bolin. Let's, let's talk about Pat Bolin. I mean, deserving. I mean, I think this is the, you know, he, he's the owner that, you know, kind of shied away from the, the you know, spotlight. Right. right. Um, but, man, the winning percentages and what he's meant to this this franchise and NFL. <clears throat> yeah. You know, I think we're on the right track with him, you know, and I think that everybody's starting to realize uh, the importance that he was with the NFL and the commissioner and how involved he was at the league level. And so we're on a good track. It looks like, you know, hopefully it's in the near future, but uh, I think with the way things went last year and, and uh, you know, the, the recognition of him and the importance that he has been to this league that I think whether it be this year or not, we hope 
but the good thing is he's on track and is going to feel like pretty good that he's going to get in. Right, selection committee, time. 2018, Pat Bowling. Let's get him That's in it. there. Let's That's get right. him in there. So you and I, uh, about a month or so ago, <laughs> the American Century Golf Tournament. Uh-huh. You and I, you know, we, we stared each other down when we first started the tournament. I looked you eye to eye. I, I kind of I matched you the first round. You came out and played very well, and I gave you 15 <laughs> points and absolutely shoot 79 the first day. Yeah, you gave me 15 points, and then I was like, and all right, I'm, I'm going to build off this 15 points. And then points. he didn't even budge on the second oh, day. Oh, my Hands goodness, up. man. Had a that's tough great. day of the second day, and we went to the third day, which was the money day. The money day. And that's why I'll be collecting. And, and <laughs> <laughs> Good to see them together, and it does make everybody feel old when you think it has been 20 years since they won uh, the Super Bowl together. But, Willie, you remember playing against those guys, and not to bring up... She's say old, and then say, well, Willie, you remember playing. Yeah, and I am going to bring up old news. Uh, great you, host. You, you were 0-3 against the Broncos. Oh, what made them so tough? Stats. I wasn't 0-3. We she beat got the Broncos. But uh, I, I hated to see those two together. When those I, two I were say, playing. When those yeah, two were playing. I, I hated to see those two uh, together. Um... Elway, first of all, I mean, this, this guy, he, we talk about a dual threat, a guy who can do it all. He had a rifle as an arm. And you're showing TD, and I'm talking about Elway, but this guy, um, Elway, was one of the smartest, one of the strongest, uh, one of the guys that could do a lot. His arm had no – had he, he, he – we, when, we, when we talked in game plan, we tried to find negative things to say about – you couldn't. Not much. Yeah. Not much. And then when they added – when they added TD, that's when the Super Bowl, you know – uh, run started in TD, the vision, the strength. You couldn't arm tackle a guy. Um, that one move and, and get downhill, right. yeah. those linemen rolling at your knees and cutting you and getting low, TD was, a, was, a, was one of those backs where um, you, 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 you couldn't figure out exactly how to, how to get at him, how to tackle him, because he was strong enough to run you over, not me, of course. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I had to throw that in yeah. there, TD. You know I love you. But he had speed. He had that breakaway speed. He had great vision. He had great balance. And w- once he got going, man, he that those two, that combination, man, they were deadly. Well, I mean, obviously both of these guys were unique individuals. And uh, congratulations, TD, all of our Hall of Famers. But TD definitely resonated with me. A guy who you saw on special teams. You saw him go down there making That's his, how he started. Yeah, that's how he started. That's how I started. Um what he did was he bought himself time to be the starter. So by playing special teams, you bought yourself enough time to, for injuries to happen, for what else to happen, for you to get on the field and get the ball. And I remember just watching every time. Like, I was like, it, are, are they planning to, for him to put his foot in the ground and just go? That was and, it. And there was no hole that there, but he it. could still do it, and it would just open up. Congratulations again, TD. Yep. Congratulations. And Willie's not old. He was only 10 years old during those three games Thank you. when he faced them. So um, if you do the math, he's only 30. I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> 25. Next on Training Camp Primetime, we head to the great Northwest. We're on the field with Russell Wilson and the Seahawks Dangerous. after the break. Hi, Mitsubishi Motors, Amber Theo Harris. Uh, we're getting ready to eat some nectarines here in the third hour of Primetime Training Camp. Our crew has fresh fruit for us. I mean, football is back, you guys. Yes. Michael Robinson and Willie McGinnis here with us. And guess who else is probably with us right at this hour? Our, one of our favorite Cowboys? Uh, one of our favorite Cowboys, yeah. probably. Uh, he's now our favorite he, one. He Des is our Bryant. favorite guy. Yeah, yeah. Check it out. Your favorite thing to watch during these preseason games? Assuming you Man, just football, you know? Football. I know everybody's watching. I, I, I like how NFL Network, you know, they got it tuned in to all of the camps, you know? I swear right now, you go in my room, my, my TV is on NFL Network. It stays on NFL Network. I like to see what's going on around the league. I just think it's cool. You know, I got a lot of friends and I respect a lot of guys around the league. I just like watching that stuff. Hey, we like watching you, Dez. Yes. Uh, hit us up. Tweet us. Call in. We'd yeah. love to have you on the show anytime. Let me, dog. And you, you can know, best you, believe you our number. cameras will stay on the Cowboys <laughs> and you, Dez, because you're one of the best players in the league. And don't forget the Jumpman's size 15. 19, 12. Like, send, him, 12. send him over. Dez. 12. Just send uh, him to the network. I'm Say a five, Mike five and kids. Five and kids over here. <laughs> I keep wonder, watching this, Dez. Why do I picture love Dez you, Bryant dog. right now in his dorm room in Oxnard, you know, like with the air conditioning on like 60 and he's eating Chinese food and just watching NFL well, right Network? Now, right now, right now, Chinese food? You I keep am. Talking about I keep food. bringing it up. Can, we please, can right we please now. feed Amber so we can continue this last <laughs> hour on the show, please? All right. I won't get hangry, I promise. And you know why? because we're going out to the Seahawks. And I love that watching the Seahawks like that. in Renton, Washington. Checking them out on the field. And 
You know, this is a team that had a tumultuous offseason. There was rumors about Russell Wilson and his leadership. Uh, is Richard Sherman on the trade block or not? But you can't deny that this is a team that if all things go right, these are going to be contenders. Yeah, I mean, uh, let me tell you something. R Russell Wilson, you, you, I hope people aren't questioning this guy's leadership, this guy's commitment. Um, this is a superstar quarterback. He is a franchise quarterback. He is the undisputed leader of the Seattle Seahawks. Let's leave it right there first, okay? Second of all, that running back competition. That's what I'm excited about. That's what I'm excited to see. You Lacey have Eddie Lacy. I can he's see his shape. muscles. You, you see, see him dancing? Yeah. You see him? He's dancing, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's happy. My only thing is late in the season in Seattle, the weather isn't always hot like it is right now. But with that weight staying off, you have C.J. Procise. You know, in the back for a third down back, another guy who can play um, all downs. You have Thomas Ross. So this backfield, this backfield right now um, is highly competitive, and they have to get back to running the football. And that includes running Russell Wilson, which they should be able to do because he's healthy. They will run the football, and I like the receivers they have on the outside. Uh, some stars out there, some guys, some great leaders, Doug Baldwin. Tyler Locke is going to be – I think he's still going to get better and better. He's been developing as one of the better guys. I hope guys. he comes back from that injury, That's, man. Yeah, that was Jermaine tough. Curse. Um, we saw a lot um, from Paul last year, uh, Paul Richardson. But, you know, you talk about leadership. And I look at the Seattle Seahawks. I played for Pete Carroll. I understand the type of personalities that he, that he has in, on that team and in that locker room. You have a, lead, a lot of leaders across the board. You have a lot of guys that speak their opinion, and he allows that in that environment, but they also hold each other accountable. Like, when you're not working as hard, when you don't do something that they don't approve of, you're not supposed to have thin skin in that locker room. I know a bunch of those guys. I know how Richard thinks. I talked to Richard um, Bennett and some of those other guys on the defensive side. They hold each other accountable. They also respect each other, Mike. But don't think you're going to come in there and divide that locker room, whatever they're going on, whatever's going on in that locker room. And I, I've been in a, a locker room just like the same. We're going to handle it in-house. We're going to make sure everybody stays out of it. But if you got something that we have an issue with, we're definitely going to address that. Mm -hmm. One way or the other, we're going to address that, and we're going to hold each other accountable. And I think that's why this team has been so good over the last um, shit, five to six, seven years. Yeah, man. Is because you have playmakers. You guys got. You have guys with chips on their shoulders, and you and you're allowed in that environment to be yourself. And I th and I think also wins remedy all of this all of this talk of all season. <laughs> yeah, true. You start winning some games, you go on a three or four game winning streak, you start running the football with some authority, your defense starts shutting people out like they were doing last year, ever since Pete's been in the league, right? Uh, then all of this talk goes away. No more talk about Russell having some leadership but issues. We're no more talk like, about we're talking like they, didn't, they wasn't in the playoffs, they, so they wasn't in a divisional, game, in a divisional <laughs> playoff game last yeah. year. I think just they've set the bar right. so high. They've set the bar so high. I mean, this has been the number one defense in the league since 2011. Mm. I mean, that's that's a that's a that's well, a wait, statement they, right they there. Were, they were fifth last year total defense. I'm defense. talking about since 2011. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, since yeah. Since yeah. Since in its totality. In its totality. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. The, <laughs> you know smell, what I'm the saying? smell of these egg rolls just you know got what I'm to saying? me. Stay your lane. Stay your lane. Oh, Lavar, you don't want to ball with me, Lavar. You do not want to ball with me. Uh oh. All right. One thing about the the Seattle Seahawks is you always have to start with step one can you win your division and when you look around that division you have to say the answer is yes yeah they, they, they can win the division um you obviously have arizona cardinals who um <laughs> if they can get their quarterback uh you know straight um carson palmer and be consistent late late in the season they, they can make some noise i think the san francisco 49ers are going to be a lot better than people give them credit for um so you look at uh, the possibility of who's going to win the division. I think here early you you have to say that it's the Seattle Seahawks. But, Willie, you know it just as well as I do. The games still have to be played. Yeah, but I'm going to say it's the Seattle Seahawks. And I believe until somebody goes out and consistently beats them and wins the division, they, they're the king of the division. Let me ask you a question, Willie. You see Tom Cable? Well, that's his group right there. Yep. Why isn't that guy head coach? Uh, you know what? <laughs> I, I'm not sure, man, because he does magic with, magic with the pieces that they give him. And that's been the concern. If there, if there is a concern or something to nitpick at about Seattle, it's the offensive line. They have so many guys switching positions, uh, so many first players in and out of noticed, that rotation. And if you talk about Russell early on getting hit a lot um, and, and the pressure and him having to scramble, uh, and, and not being able to set his feet, it's been, it's been because of that offensive line. But he's done a great job 
with the pieces that they give him. Yes, yes, he has. But I think about I, I think the reason why the pieces that he gets sometimes are a little funky, you know what I mean, is because there's only one little pot. And a great GM told me this one time. There's only a certain pot of money. We have one of the highest paid quarterbacks. We have some of the highest paid secondary guys. We have some of the highest paid linebackers. We have one of the highest paid tight ends. I mean, there's only but so much money to go around. So the offensive line seems to take, you know, the brunt of not having that, 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 th th those resources available to get uh, quality offensive linemen. So they have to draft them, have to make them young, have to deal with guys that don't have a lot of experience. I like the guy they got last year, Fetty. And I know they're going to get better and He's they got mean, some new man. pieces. He mean. They're I like running him. the football to help. Take care of uh, Russell Wilson, too. All yes, right, sir. Seattle Seahawks once again expected to be contenders there in the NFC. Now let's head to Dallas, Oxnard, California.